Learn about some different ways to do CI/CD for SQL database in Fabric, as well as what to use when and what gives you more flexibility. And of course, lots of demos. This week on Data Exposed MVP Edition. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Expo's MVP edition. Today, I'm joined by Kevin, uh, an MVP. Uh, Kevin, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, sure. So my name's Kevin Chan. I am a lead technology advocate living in the Netherlands. And basically, these days, I spend most of my time working with Microsoft Fabric, so dealing with the Fabric platforms, CICD requirements, etc. Awesome. Great. Well, it's great to have you on the show. And, you know, as I was mentioning before we went on the air, like I'm really excited about this topic because I think it's kind of a, a differentiator for SQL in many ways. And so it's great to shine some more light and learn some more about CICD for SQL DB in Fabric. So, you know, if we want to get right into it, can you tell us about the different ways to do this with Azure DevOps and why you might consider these different ways? Yeah, sure. So there has been a few different ways advertised online in the past of doing it through deployment pipelines and doing it with all the other fabric items. However, there may be times when you don't want to actually do your CI CD for SQL databases in fabric with all your fabric items. So for example, if you have multiple SQL databases in fabric or together in one workspace, or if you want your SQL database and fabric updates actually kept isolated from updates to other fabric items. Okay, got it. So how do these two methods work? Sure. Well, it's first method is where you actually go into an application like Visual Studio Code and you actually create a database project based on an existing SQL database and fabric. And then from there, you can actually go into a pipeline in Azure DevOps, have the Git repository, the database project is in as a source, and create what's known as a DAT pack file based on that database project. And then you can use that DAT pack file to update the SQL database in Fabric. Now, the other option, instead of creating a database project, if you don't want to work with those, is that you can directly extract the schema into a DAT pack instead. And then again, just like before, use that DAT pack to update another SQL database in Fabric. Got it. Makes sense. And is it pretty easy to do things like create a database project or generate a DAT pack from tools like VS Code? Yeah, so I can actually quickly show you this if I go into it now. So if we go in Visual Studio Code, for example, you can see I've already got a database project created. But what I can do, if we go to SQL Server, I can connect up. And I've just realized it hasn't actually signed over. So what you can do once you've create, connected is just select Create Project from Database. And then once that happens, you have a database project like this appear in Visual Studio Code. And then from there, you can initialize the folder it's in as a Git repository in Visual Studio Code and synchronize it with a Git repository stored in Azure DevOps. Nice. Awesome. So I, I think uh, I'd love to know a little bit more about like how these two methods work in action. Like, Is that something you have to show us today? Um, yeah, I can actually show you how this works. Awesome. So if we go over to Microsoft Fabric, you can see I have SQL Database and Fabric already here. But what I can do, I've got two separate types of pipelines here. One of them will directly extract the schema, and I'll show that one first. So I click on Edit. And then what I'm actually doing, because this is an important thing to do, is install the latest version of SQL package on the Azure pipeline agent so that it can actually support SQL database and fabric. And I do that with the .NET tool command. Then I'm extracting the schema and I can actually make this a bit bigger here. And you can see I'm just literally using SQL package command here to extract directly to that pack file. And then I can publish it into Azure DevOps. And if I go back to pipelines and I just click on this one, this and you can see if I click on this completed one, 
I've actually got a DAT pack already created here. And what I will actually do, because we will use this DAT pack later in a bit, I run this pipeline. And whilst it's running, I will show you the other way of doing it. So if we go to this particular pipeline, You'll see here the source is actually a Git repository that contains that database project. And then what I'm doing is using a .NET call command. I'm specifying the SQL project file that's created as part of that database project. And what I'm actually doing is just creating a .dat file again. Obviously in the other way. So if we go into a completed pipeline for this one now, And of course, I'm doing this live, so there's a slight delay. And you see again that I've got a DAT pack file created here as well. And then whichever way I use to create a DAT pack, I can then use that DAT pack to do a deployment. In other words, update a SQL database and fabric somewhere. So here I'm selecting the DAT pack file that was created on the left hand side as in the previous pipeline. And then I'm running a stage, which contains two tasks. The first one is just to download the DAT pack file. And the second is using Azure SQL database deployment task to actually directly deploy the DAT pack to a SQL database and fabric. And just to show there's no smoke and mirrors here, what I can actually do, I can create a release now. And then once this release is completed, it will deploy any updates to the SQL database and fabric. And that is how they work. Nice, awesome. That's that's awesome. And it's great to see this in action. Now, uh, kind of maybe a, a newbie question from my side is, how should folks think about using um, release pipelines like you've done here versus using some of the native source control integration at the workspace level? Um, in in fabric well to be honest folks can approach this oh, as long as they're comfortable or they can go into visual studio code like i showed just now and create a project directly from a database creation so if you go into microsoft fabric if you go into a database for example a sql database in fabric i should say and you can actually select open in visual studio code or sql server management studio that will give you the credentials you need to open in code and it will give you a button to directly be able to do so. And that's where you can go and do the right click I showed earlier. So it's a slightly different mindset. This is more of the traditional way that people have used over the years to do CI/CD, for example, for a SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, etc. So it does depend on what people are comfortable with and, of course, their requirements, like I mentioned earlier. Got it. Makes sense. And then if they are using kind of this classic, I don't know if you would call it a classic way uh, of using uh, pipelines and uh, those sorts of things, I assume like you you do this using a, a GUI or do you do this writing YAML files or is it uh, and or, or how, how do we think about that? So typically when people start using Azure DevOps, they do use the GUI based classic pipelines, which is the ones I've showed just now to do the build of the backpack and then the release. But over time, as people want to do more advanced solutions, they want to actually use YAML instead. And I've got an example here. This is a YAML pipeline in Azure DevOps, so it's completely text-based. And if I scroll down here, and as you can see, it is the same task I showed you just now. So what I'm doing here is building that DAT pack again, publishing it back in Azure DevOps, like I showed earlier when we did the build of the DAT pack. And then I'm doing a deployment, as you can see here. So to be honest with you, you get more flexibility if you do it in a YAML pipeline, because you can work with things like environments like you can see here. And that will allow you then to actually do things like an approvals process. You can do that in the GUI as well, but here you do 
manage it directly in the pipeline. Got it. Makes sense. Awesome. Um, any final tips or tricks for folks who are maybe just getting started with this or trying to figure out what to use when? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of material that people can get to grips with from Microsoft Learn to be able to do this. And if you're just starting out creating pipelines, especially YAML pipelines, and you want to do that in Visual Studio Code, there's extensions to help. And GitHub Copilot as well can be very useful. Awesome. Great. Well, Kevin, thanks so much. Personally, I learned a lot. Uh, this was great. Uh, and I'm sure our viewers did too. For our viewers, if you like this episode, we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. Go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment and let us know uh, what you think. And we hope you see you next time on Data Exposed.